we felt it was important that this movie was very differentiated. Um, and that the idea of doing, in a sense, a coming-of-age story for both Bumblebee and for Charlie um, was an interesting idea. Charlie is uh, at that very 18, turning 18 um, and trying to cope with the loss of her dad a few years before and what a lot of 18 year olds are trying to cope with. And ironically, she meets a robot who get, allows her to become who she is in a sense. And uh, you know, that duality, both characters are going through that, you know, allowed us to really get into just much more, um, it allowed us to slow the movie down uh, and really sit in the emotional uh, aspects of it. I think that Christina came up with uh, the heart of it, you know, and I think that's shown through. And, and, you know, a pitch is always so much different than eventually a script, but um, what she was able to, to convey in a very small treatment, if you would, uh, that this was going to be an emotional ride. You know, one of the things we've never been able to do, in a sense, is give a Transformer a full character. Um, if you look at, traditionally, their archetypes, uh, you know, Optimus is wise and good and all-knowing, and Bumblebee's the eager teenager who's ready to go, and Ironhide's the guy who wants to shoot everybody up. You know, and so each one has a very distinct character, but we were never able to sit in there and watch it develop and watch it change and watch it be affected by what was going on. Uh, they are who they are in the previous movies and in the animation. This was a, an attempt to allow the audience to get to know a Transformer in a way they've never had before. Charlie lost her dad a couple years before. Her mom has found a new love. Uh, her younger brother has related to uh, the new dad, if you would, and she's feeling left out. And, and teenagers can often have that experience without having the family. So in a way, she's having the family issue on top of what it is like to be 17, 18 years old and trying to figure out who you are. Um, and I think what, what Haley, you know, she's d a lot different than Charlie in person. She's just a phenomenal actress. Uh, she clearly has the um, charm and charisma that Charlie has, but she is, um, and I think a lot of the strength of Charlie comes through in, in, innately in who Haley is. George is just charming. You know, we saw that immediately in his test. Uh, again, because they're somewhat untested as actors, you don't quite know what that is going to mean. So you're really going with sort of first gut reaction to who they are. And he was just charming and fun, and, and you knew you were going to like him. The fans love different kinds of transformations, and that's one of the things we worked hard on in this movie, to give them things that they've never seen before. I know that the depth of emotional response that we're going to get out of Bumblebee is a direct product of the fact that he's worked with inanimate objects. Uh, you know, he's had to coax from an inanimate object something that has personality, if you would, right? In this case, Bumblebee's not an inanimate object, but he is somebody who's sitting in the corner of a barn, when we're, uh, corner of the garage when we're shooting, who's not there. So for Travis to have it so clear in his mind exactly what that character is doing, what he's feeling, how he's reacting, all that stuff, I think once we see the movie 
complete enough, I think we're going to be blown away by the level of sophistication in terms of emotional uh, communications that uh, Bumblebee is going to be capable of. What attracted me to Travis was the fact that he had started a business that was very successful, Leica is a really cutting edge stop motion animation company, uh, who have done four really good movies, which is not easy to make one good movie. Uh, and he had directed the last one, uh, Kubo and His Two Strings, and I'd seen that movie, and that's what got me started, was, you know, I thought, wow, what a movie. Um, and uh, his sensibility and what that company stands for felt right for this project. When we sat down and talked, what he focused on emotionally and the kind of thing he was trying to evoke, like an Amblin movie and, and like what was, what was it like to grow up in the 80s, he really had that down. Um, I'm older than he is, so I don't have the 80s as a child, but he had that in his experience. So, um, you know, between the qualities that he had and, and exhibited in Leica and his gut instincts and what he thought was important is what convinced us that he's the right guy.